Welcome back to another learning series with Mr. Knight. Today we're going to continue with cell division. However, we're going to look at meiosis. Now, for meiosis, it's important for sexual reproduction. So we produce our gametes, sex cells, you may call them, by this process. Now, to remind you, as we have done in mitosis, meiosis pretty much will, will need this information. So remember, when we're counting chromosomes, we count the centromere. So the number of centromeres will determine the number of chromosomes. So on your left, you have one centromere and you have one chromatid. On the right, you have one centromere. However, you have two chromatids. These chromatids are similar, so we call them sister chromatids. Again, the P arm is a shorter arm and the Q arm is the longer arm. If you haven't seen the mitosis lesson, I recommend you to watch that urgently. Now to check your learning, let's see how many chromosomes are on the left and how many chromatids. Remember you're counting the number of centromere for the number of chromosomes. So yes, you should be, you should be seeing two centromere, which means two chromosomes and two chromatids. So if you get two chromosomes and two chromatids, well done. On the right, let's count the number of chromosomes and number of chromatids. Yes, you should have noticed that you see three centromeres, which means three chromosomes, and you have seen six chromatids. So if you got those number, well done. Now, meiosis is a type of cell division where one cell, which is known as the parent cell, divides and produces four non-identical cells, which we call the daughter cells. Now, very important to note is that the daughter cells, they are called haploid cells. Easy way to remember the H for half. You could use that to remember. And so the daughter cells will have half the number of chromosomes as compared to the parent cell. So, for example, human beings, we started out with 46 chromosomes and each daughter cell, or for example, sperm cell and egg cells, they will have half that number, which is 23 chromosomes. Now, a summary or the main idea for meiosis is simple this is that the starting cell and the daughter cells the daughter cells must have the daughter cells must have half the number of everything compared to the parent cell so if we started out with four chromosomes and four chromatids in each of the daughter cell you should have you should have only two chromosomes and two chromatids half that number however to achieve this it will require two sets of division. First, the parent cell will have to double up. And remember that double up means replicate. So replication takes place. And there is only one replication process. And then that first cell, as a result, now will split and give you two new cells. Each of these two new cells will split to produce two individual cells, giving a total of four daughter cells and resulting in half the number of everything as compared to the first cell or the original cell. Some facts to note is that in meiosis, you'll have two sets of divisions. So you have PMAT1 and PMAT2. Now the daughter cells, they have they will have half the number of chromosomes as the parent cell, which we mentioned before. There will be four non-identical daughter cells producing from this division. 
So very important to note those facts. Now do not get frustrated with these long num um, names and letters. Let's look at them very easily. Now remember now in meiosis, there are two sets of divisions. In fact, we refer to those divisions as mitotic divisions, which means the nucleus of the cells are dividing. So first to point out, there's one interphase. And after that first interphase, you have a first PMAT. And we call that PMAT mitotic division one. And after that, you have a cytokinesis. After that is finished, you go to your second PMAT, which is your second mitotic division. And then you finish with a cytokinesis. Now, to remember this, this is a long process and hence it requires some emphasis. So this will be a big invasion. So you should remember it by this. Invasion. Please make army time counts. Please make army time counts. So you say this twice because there are two sets of division. Now, in the interphase... Just like any regular cell, there will be no nuclear division. There will be no nuclear division or cytoplasmic division. In other words, the cell will not be dividing at this point. No cellular division at all. However, the cell will replicate its parts. And so, for example, I'm using color in this example to make it easier for us to follow and understand. So I started out with two greens two purples. So if they replicate, you should end up with four greens, four purples. However, to emphasize this point, that interphase only occurs once. Now, after interphase, you're going to prophase one because remember now you're going to PMAT one. So PMAT one. So the first thing is prophase one. So prophase, like normal, the chromosomes will condense and become visible. The nuclear membrane will start to break down. You will have your centriole and your spindle fiber forming. However, a very interesting process is taking place here, which is very unique and very important to result in variation of a cell or uniqueness of each cell. And this process is known as crossing over. So you have a process called crossing over and synapsis taking place. What this simply means is that the chromosomes will come together. So you can use the word, the letter P for press. So the chromosome press together or come together. And while they come together, they will exchange genetic information. So genetic information will cross over from one chromosome to the other chromosomes. And they go vice versa. And so if you notice some of the green churn going over to the purple some of the purple going over to the green and occurs here as well all right and then after this is finished we go into our metaphase one now in metaphase one the chromosomes are lying in the middle of a cell which we call the metaphase plate however in metaphase one that you should note is that the chromosomes they are aligned in a parallel fashion in other words, they must be side by side. You remember in mitosis, we said that it's going to be in a single file. However, at this time, metaphase one, they are in the middle, but they are side by side or in a parallel fashion. After metaphase one, we go into our anaphase one. In anaphase one, the chromosome, homologous chromosomes. Now we're talking about chromosomes. No keyword here, chromosomes, not chromatid. Now, the, the homologous chromosomes, which means similar chromosomes, they will move to opposite poles or sides of the cell. So, how this is achieved, again, remember, for this to take place, the spindle fiber must, they, they must become shorter and thicker. So, each of them will shorten and thicken, and that will create a pull on these chromosomes and pull them to opposite sides of the cell. Now, our telophase, in this phase, you have your nuclear membrane start to reform and you will have your cleavage furrow forming as well. And the nuclear membrane is forming around the chromosomes 
to hold them on opposite sides of the cell while the cytoplasm is dividing to ensure that each cell will have their own set of chromosomes. Now, when that is finished, we go into a cytokinesis and notice what is happening here. Let's go back to that. It's split right in the middle and will produce these two new cells with these chromosomes by themselves. You notice the color pattern already start to be visible. Now, after this cytokinesis is finished, we'll go into a second set of divisions. So, our second PMAT. So, PMAT2, and, and I will go and tell you right now that this second phase, the second phase of meiosis, is similar to the regular mitosis in that the chromosomes they will condense, the nuclear membrane start to disappear, just the same. In metaphase 2, the chromosomes align on the metaphase plate, but in this time, now we're going to be what? Single file. So notice mitosis um, in metaphase 1, they are parallel, side by side. However, in metaphase 2, they are in single file, just like the regular mitosis. And then after that now, the chromatids, notice the key word here, the chromatids will be pulled to opposite poles. And remember, we have two cells, so the same thing is occurring in both cells. And then after anaphase, we go to the telophase. So notice these chromatids are on opposite poles. So hence, what's going to happen here now is that the nuclear membrane will reform. And then each of these cells will split to result in how many? Absolutely four new cells. So I'm reminding you now of the original cell we started out with. If you notice on the left top corner. We started out with two green, two purple. Each of the cells, they are kind of different. If you notice, you will not see purely green, you will not see um, purely purple. And in reality, you will have more variation, a matter of fact. All right? I only use a mixture of two that were in the middle. But in reality, you will have many variations occurring in the chromosomes or exchanging of the genetic material. And so this now, the point to note is that you started out with four chromosomes and four chromatid in this example each of the new cells must have half of everything half of everything so here you have two chromosomes two chromatids half has the original cell so each cell will has half of everything compared to the original cell all right to finish this off using the human being example and just by using the chromatid, notice I'm only using the chromatid, not chromosomes here. So I'm just only talking about chromatids. So if the original cell started out with 4 or 6 chromatids, in the interphase they will double up. And that number will continue until the telophase. The telophase, it is still 92. That double number it is still 92. However, it is break up into two on either side. But that one cell still, it's still one cell. So it's a total of 92. However, when the cell split, it will produce two new cells of 46 each. Now, I'm only going to highlight this one in red. So, I'm only using this cell in red. The same thing happening to this red cell will happen to this blue cell. So, I'm going to continue to P mat 2. So, I'm saying multiply by 2. Why? Because the blue cell is also undergoing this. But I'm only showing one cell. Okay? And so the first P mat will result, the 46 number will continue, just the same, until telophase that 46, and we're talking about chromatid. The 46 chromatid now will separate into two equal halves. And so 23 go on either side. And then the chromatids now will produce 23, chromoso 23 chromatids in each cell. And remember that multiplied by two, so we should have four cells, two from the red and two from the blue as a result. So we should have four cells with half the number of 46, starting with 46, we get 23 in each new cells. Again, I will give a new lesson on these numbers in both mitosis and meiosis. And we will compare both of them side by side. So at the end of the lesson, I hope this helped to continue learning with Mr. Knight please simply subscribe. See you in the next lesson.